The question of whether Russia has once again moved ahead of the West is not simply about announcing a new system name or showcasing hardware. It is about timing, intent, and the strategic gap between perception and reality. The transition narrative from the S500 toward a potential S600 has triggered debate because it suggests momentum rather than pause. In modern defense competition, momentum itself can shift balances, even before a system is fully visible or deployed. To understand whether Russia has truly outpaced the West again, we need to analyze what progress actually means in today's military environment and how speed, integration, and doctrine redefine advantage. When the S-500 entered discussion, it already represented a shift from traditional air defense toward a layered aerospace defense concept. It was not just about intercepting aircraft or ballistic missiles, but about blurring the boundary between atmosphere and near space. Moving toward an S-600 concept implies that Russia may already be treating the S-500 as a transitional platform rather than an end state. This approach mirrors a philosophy where systems are stepping stones, not destinations, allowing faster adaptation as threats evolve. One reason this raises concern in Western analysis is that many Western programs follow longer, more segmented development cycles. These cycles emphasize exhaustive testing, political oversight, and interoperability across alliances. While this produces reliable systems, it also slows reaction time. If Russia is iterating faster, even with narrower deployment, it can create temporary but meaningful windows of advantage that influence strategic calculations. Another key factor is the nature of modern threats. Hypersonic weapons, maneuverable re-entry vehicles, and low observable platforms challenge existing detection and interception models. The S-500 was designed with these challenges in mind, but the emergence of an S-600 concept suggests anticipation of the next wave rather than satisfaction with current coverage. That anticipation alone signals a proactive posture rather than a reactive one. Outpacing the West does not necessarily mean having a universally superior system. It can mean fielding a capability earlier, integrating it more tightly into national doctrine, or accepting higher uncertainty in exchange for speed. Russia has historically shown willingness to deploy systems while continuing refinement, whereas Western states often wait for near-perfect readiness. In a rapidly shifting environment, early deployment can shape deterrence even if refinement continues afterward. Sensor integration is another area where acceleration matters. Modern defense is less about individual interceptors and more about data fusion. If the S-600 concept emphasizes faster sensor refresh rates, broader spectrum awareness, and predictive tracking, it may compress the decision cycle dramatically. Shorter decision cycles can neutralize advanced threats not by superior firepower, but by superior timing. The role of automation and artificial intelligence also changes the comparison. Western militaries invest heavily in AI, but often within strict ethical and procedural constraints. Russia's approach may allow more aggressive automation in threat assessment and engagement support. If so, the advantage is not technological novelty but operational boldness, which can translate into quicker responses under pressure. Industrial structure also influences pace. Russia's defense industry, while smaller in scale, is often more centralized. This can reduce coordination delays and allow faster shifts in priorities. Western industries, spread across multiple countries and corporations, must balance national interests, budgets, and political consensus. Speed is harder to achieve in such an environment, even when resources are greater. It is also important to consider strategic focus. The West must prepare for global commitments, expeditionary operations, and alliance defense. Russia can concentrate heavily on territorial and strategic asset defense. This focus allows optimization of systems like S-500 and S-600 specifically for denial over key regions, potentially making them extremely effective within their intended scope. However, outpacing is not permanent. History shows that temporary leads often trigger counter-investment. If Russia's acceleration toward an S-600 is real, it may already be influencing Western planning, funding, and research priorities. In this sense, the lead is both an achievement and a catalyst for renewed competition. Another subtle dimension is ambiguity. Limited information, controlled disclosures, and strategic silence can exaggerate perceived advantage. If adversaries cannot clearly assess capability or readiness, they must assume worst-case scenarios. 
This uncertainty itself can function as a force multiplier, regardless of the system's actual deployment status. From a doctrinal perspective, Russia emphasizes denial and deterrence through complexity. The idea is not to guarantee interception of every threat, but to make offensive planning so uncertain and costly that it loses appeal. If the S-600 strengthens this denial framework even incrementally, it can alter strategic stability without dramatic public demonstrations. The Western response is unlikely to be direct imitation. Instead, it may focus on bypass strategies, such as standoff weapons, cyber operations, or space-based systems. This dynamic means that being, ahead, is less about absolute dominance and more about forcing the opponent into adaptation. By that measure, acceleration alone can be considered a form of success. At the same time, speed carries risk. Accelerated programs can face integration issues, reliability concerns, and logistical strain. Whether Russia has truly outpaced the West will ultimately depend on how well these risks are managed over time. A system that exists mostly on paper or in limited trials does not equal sustained advantage. In the broader picture, the S-500 to S-600 narrative reflects a shift in how military competition is measured. It is no longer just about who has the best system, but who evolves faster, learns quicker, and adapts doctrine alongside technology. If Russia is demonstrating continuous evolution rather than generational pauses, it suggests a competitive model that challenges traditional Western timelines. So has Russia outpaced the West again? The most accurate answer may be that it has temporarily shifted the tempo. By moving quickly and signaling ongoing advancement, Russia forces others to respond on its timeline. In modern strategic competition, controlling tempo can be as influential as controlling territory. Whether this lead endures or fades will depend not only on technology, but on how effectively speed is converted into lasting capability. Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next time as we explore more of the world's most advanced military technologies.